Babe, guess what? What, honey? We're going to talk about some more magical Harvest Host locations today. I love when we talk about Harvest Host locations because like every other place, these are places I want to go to. Yeah, there are so many magical places in the Harvest Host Network. and We've got a special guest coming on today to speak about them. So put your seatbelt on. Because here we go. Did you know that 46 million Americans plan to take an RV trip in the next 12 months? 90% of recreational vehicle owners take three or more mini vacations every year. Welcome to the RV Destinations Podcast. If it's RV travel, we're talking about it. From campgrounds to museums to national and state parks, kayaking and hiking opportunities. One of the most fun and pleasurable things you can do is just hit the road. So be ready to be inspired. Welcome in to the RV Destinations Podcast. Now your host, President Randy Beheimer and Editor-in-Chief Callie Beheimer. Hello and welcome to the RV Destinations Podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about everything destination related. Whoa, you just threw in our intro. I did. Isn't you that crazy? Did. It, it is kind of crazy. We haven't done that in a hot minute. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us here on YouTube and also the audio uh, podcast. And we appreciate you joining. We appreciate uh, everything you do here and continue to support the channel. And we're going to keep bringing you great destinations. But today we're yes. going to be talking about some more very magical Harvest Host locations. Right, which Harvest Host locations truly are destinations. So it just goes hand in hand. You just get to stay at these destinations if you so choose. Yeah, we, we love the Harvest Host. Uh, uh, we, we have a partnership with them, and, and mm-hmm. then we just kind of trade off different uh, advertising and stuff like that. But, you know, we love it because it's kind of a win-win situation. You get yeah. to stay there free. Yeah. Somebody local, small business owner gets to stay and gets, you know, you to go in and buy a few things from their shop. And so it's really a win-win situation. And that's why we love the Harvest Host Network. That's why we help promote them and promote some of their magical pl- places. Before we get too far in, we've yeah. got a guest we do. on the line here. You He's probably him? just sitting there like, what about me, guys? What about me? Well, hey, Larry. We have Larry Schultz on the line, and he is with actually the Escapees half of Harvest Hosts. And Larry is the RV show director with Escapees. Hi, Larry. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm wonderful. Thanks for uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about Harvest Hosts. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, Harvest Host truly has a ton of fans. You know, whether you're working with Harvest Host, you know, because you are with them or just outside of that, it's just, I don't, there's just a whole lot of fans of Harvest Host. It just, now that we've been using it, and I think we've done what a lot of people do, we've had a membership for years and uh, started using it. And now we're like, why didn't we use this right, sooner? Right. We were just, we, <laughs> this was great. We were just talking to you, Larry, about that specific Gulf line. You said you kind of had a similar circumstance. I mean, we've had a membership for three or four years. Yeah. We just started using it this year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, regularly. So anyway, uh, is that similar to, to, to your story? That's exactly it's exactly the same. You know, we were talking about how you you have a certain number of tools in your toolbox for traveling right you know yeah and uh um things that you focus on and when you're making your travel planning what am i going to do for this one night stay here or or, or there and we just had not we had the harvest host membership but we Mm -hmm. just uh you just gotta you gotta weave it in and make it part of your normal planning and once we have it's like oh my gosh can we uh, can we make our living? Uh, can we make our full? Can we make this a full time thing going to Harvest <laughs> right. Coast only? Uh, right. We haven't quite made that work yet, but uh, that's a, that's a that lot of traveling when you got to yeah. go to a different place every day. But. I know, right. but it, it's been so fun to use because we. I mean, we swam with manatees in Florida, Crystal uh, River, Florida, Crystal right? River, Florida, which was incredible. Um, we did this great uh, dairy farm in Wisconsin. Um, we've done the Air Pioneer Space Museum out in uh, Air and Space Indiana. Museum in Indiana. Mm-hmm. We Sculpture the, Park the, out the, in South oh, Dakota. Oh yeah, we just did that. I mean, there's there's just so many cool places to go, and you're supporting that person's love and passion by staying there, sharing it with others, visiting, buying a few things in their gift store, or taking a tour, or buying a few things in their shop. You know, and, and what better way to support a local business and you get to use your RV and stay on their property, which is right, great. Right, that's right. Exactly. 
Well, and, and honestly, all the listeners out there and viewers, uh, if you don't have a Harvest Host membership at this point, just get one. Just I get mean, one. It, uh, uh, how much, Larry? Do you know how much? I don't even know how much it is. Is it ninety nine bucks, eighty nine bucks, somewhere in that range? I think the basic membership is ninety nine dollars, and you know, you you make three stays and maybe even less than three stays, and you've paid that back, right? Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's been a wonderful thing, and we've uh, appreciated working it into our yeah. schedule this year. So, and we we use. I'm not sure how you use it, Larry, but we use it. It's kind of those in-between shops. Mm-hmm. We're headed from Kentucky out to Wyoming. We're going to hit a couple of spots on the way, a couple of Harvest Host spots on the way. So we'll have a campground there when we get there to Wyoming. But uh, And that's exactly what we did. We yeah. hit two uh, Harvest Host spots on our way out to Wyoming. And it just yeah. makes it nice and easy. That has been the same way that we've used Harvest Host for uh, those one-night stays in between uh, longer stays at other destinations. But... You know, now that Harvest Host is offering extra night stays, mm-hmm. and uh, in, in many other hosts, and and you know even even hookups at some of the hosts, we may we we've weave in a few longer term Harvest Host stays at uh, the locations where we can stay longer. Do you uh, can you search for that? Can you search for multi night um, locations on the Harvest Host? Yeah. I know their app is amazing. Right on that amazing app where you've got all the where you can see all the stays on a map. Yep. You can you can sort by a million different things. I mean, you can sort by rig length. You can sort by whether extra stays are allowed. You can okay. Uh, you can sort by whether there are electrical hookups or water hookups. So it, and you'll be surprised when you try that at how many of the stays do offer uh, uh, hookups and extra nights now. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. I knew that filter feature was really uh, comprehensive, but I, you, we've never been in a situation where we could stay a couple nights at a Harvest Host location. Mm-hmm. So I never, I guess I never used that filter. Uh, so we always use rig length and, um, yeah. and a few others. So that that's pretty amazing. It, it definitely they, they've and they put a lot of money and time and upgrades into it over the past couple of years, haven't they? That just the the whole app itself. Oh, definitely. Yeah, our our guys work hard on that and. Uh, it, there is there is always a project to add something new. There's always new some something new coming down the pike. Yep, yep. That that makes sense. That's fun. That you know, and and the app is is extensive. We've used it quite a bit. I love being over, able to go in there and leave reviews for folks, and then you know read the other reviews that people have left, and it's just it's it's really neat. And just the whole again the whole harvest host concept, you know, as an RVer saves you from trying to find a parking lot to fit your rig in for a night where you can just plan ahead a little bit and get to stay at an alpaca farm or a winery or a brewery or a museum or, you know, and get to enjoy that and take a a lot of times a much needed break and just enjoy wherever it is that you are and then hit the road nice and refreshed the next day. And you're you're not sitting in a Walmart parking lot or a Cracker Barrel or something like that. You get, you know, to experience something. So, now, as we typically do with the Harvest Host, uh, when we bring them onto the show, is none of these are, we're not going to do a top 10. We, we do have 10 locations that mm-hmm. we're going to speak of. And, and we really love how Larry's broke this down here. Uh, I he know. Thank down, you, Larry. You it, made my job it, super easy. He, he's oh, broken glad down. <laughs> yeah, no, this is perfect. <laughs> Uh, but he's broken it down in different categories. We're going to discuss those categories as we kind of go through these. So, again, these are in no particular order. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there are many, many, many magical places, as I said, with yes. Harvest Host. You know, Joel, the CEO of Harvest Host, has been on the show himself, and he gave us kind of some of his favorites at that moment. We've mm-hmm. had Alyssa, Carrie Price. We've we've just had a lot of people from Harvest Host. Both Alyssa's. On, on the show, right. Yeah. So. <laughs> We have been using snap pads on our Class A motorhome for years and absolutely love them. They're a stabilizer pad that goes on the bottom of our leveling jacks to really provide a good solid surface for our RV to sit on. But what a lot of folks don't know is that snap pad also offers snap jacks, which are specifically designed for scissor jack stabilizers that are found on fifth wheels, travel trailers, or really any towable with scissor jacks. They come in either a two-pack or four-pack combination 
combination and include all of the hardware and accessories you need for an easy installation. Get out to RVSnappad.com. Get your own set of snap jacks for your RV today. Use the code RVD10RVD10 to save 10% off of any of the SnapPad products. Well, you you want you want to jump in and get started, babe? Yeah, let's do this. So, you know, Larry, you talked about again us and yourself and like so many other Harvest Host members. You had the membership for quite a while and then finally started, you know, going, "Hey, we need to use this." And your very first stay Okay, my my dad would absolutely love this place. And in fact, I'm looking at the location and going, oh my gosh, this is really close to my mother-in-law's house down in Florida. We're probably going to have to visit this now, which is the Don Gartless Museum of Drag Racing in Ocala, Florida. So tell us about that stay at that Harvest Host. Well, this one, yeah, this was our very first one. And it was interesting because uh, my wife does all the trip planning. So I had not paid up a lot of attention to Harvest Host, but I knew that Harvest, I, I knew that you'd, you can stop overnight and you can park on somebody's farm. I mm-hmm. thought, well, that sounds kind of cool. But she said, we got our first Harvest Host stay on this trip. And lo and behold, we pull into a parking lot of a museum. And I didn't even know that Harvest Host had these kind of stays. Oh, and, wow. Uh, I mean, I'll just say as we as we talk through the rest of them, I think one of the very coolest things about the program to me has been the diversity of the different types of stays that there are. Yes. Um, and uh, and this one was, you know, this one's kind of unique. You know, Don Garlitz is a, you know, is a is a legendary drag racer uh, down there uh, down there in Florida, and uh, the museum's filled with. Uh, you, you you park in a in a in a standard parking lot, but it's a big parking lot, easy to park our big rig in, and uh, the uh, uh, the museum is filled with old uh, with old cars and even and even some early racing bicycles and things like that. But one of the one of my our coolest memories about this stay was in the middle of the night we heard some noise and we heard some lights going off and peeked out the window and there was a bunch of people that had arrived in the parking lot next to us. But they weren't RVers. They were setting something up. Uh, but it was difficult to tell during the dark. But once morning came, we looked outside and we realized these were people that were setting up RC uh, car drag racing. Oh, wow. Oh, so they had, <laughs> yeah, they had set up a course. Uh, well, stop. You don't really have a course, just straightaways. But they had, and these were serious people. I mean, these were not. These were not kids playing with toys. These were, <laughs> these were, these were grown adults with expensive cars that they were racing for uh, for money uh, against each other. So all in all, that was just a really uh, a really neat and uh, sort of unique way to start our Harvest Host travels. Yes, and and that you you know you you hit the nail on the head. I, I think I know when we first joined Harvest Host many years ago, I thought, oh, it's it, like you, like it's a farm. You can just stay at a farm and that'll be kind of cool and we'll experience somebody's family farm. But no, it's like a whole world of places now. And, and it's just so fun. And I'm looking at your list and I love how you have hit so many different types of locations. So it's, it's super fun. And I'm excited to continue down on your list because the next place we head to is you had this really fun, like magical New England experience, and you hit a trifecta up there of a few different <laughs> places. The first one was Misty Acres Alpaca Farm in Sydney, Maine. I am all about alpacas. Okay, I think they are the <laughs> cutest daggone thing with their little overbite, their sticking out teeth, their little mop tops. If they've recently been shorn and they've got these cute little mop tops on top of their head, I mean, how, who doesn't love an alpaca? You know. And then there's so much you can do there at the farm. So what was your experience like there? So this one was really cool. Uh, we were we had an event that we were doing in Maine. And uh, you know how RVers are. Uh, a lot of us have these little maps of the United States and we put our stickers on when we get yes. our, right. you know, when we go, when we visit a state. And Harvest Toad is, is a really cool way to pick up a state when you're in a place and you don't have anything else to do there because you get that little taste of local. It really makes you feel like you, you earned that sticker. Right. Right. Um, but anyway, that this, um, this, uh, this one in, in, uh, in Sydney, Maine, it's like almost like the iconic harvest host spot. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful view, a great big red barn. Um, 
and uh, uh, rolling green hills, and then the alpacas, which you know Joel and the Harvest Toast marketing people obviously agree with you. They love alpacas too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But we stayed there and uh, you know woke up in the morning and there was a you no know, there was a mist uh, a low kind of a low level fog covering the covering the the uh, farm there mm-hmm. so the alpacas would come walking up to us out of the mist oh, and wow. uh, just such a pic- picturesque beautiful location and you know they say that you don't necessarily save money at Harvest Host I think we spent two hundred and fifty dollars there <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> on so alpaca true. socks socks and hats and presents for the whole family christmas presents for the whole family we got we got our christmas shopping done there that's but you know if i could figure um, out a way to put an alpaca in my pocket and take it home i would do that too <laughs> they're so Kid, cute they yeah, kidding, uh, kind of kidding kind of serious here but we had the same experience we went to this wonderful uh uh, beef farm out in uh, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and we went in their store, and we're 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 pretty much kind of on the carnivore diet. We're pretty much eating all meat with occasional vegetables, and so we go in there, and we spent two hundred eighty dollars on <laughs> yes. on beef, and it's so like, are we really saving money here? <laughs> I know, but it's uh, great. The steaks were amazing. Oh, the steaks were so you good. Know, it was a one, and they, we were their second people to stay. Mm-hmm. They they had just become uh, uh, hosts, host. and uh, we were only their second stay, and so they were. Give us a tour of the whole property and everything. So it's just oh, nice. what, what, what a wonderful, what a wonderful situation. So. Yeah, and I'm looking at these pictures, and it's so funny, Larry. As you were ex- describing the alpacas coming out of the mist, that's literally the picture that popped up on my computer. Like you can oh, tell, yeah. the morning mist is coming up off the ground, and just beautiful in that red barn. It's this beautiful, per- perfect setting along a river. I mean, you know, what more do you do you need in life? Farm alpacas and happiness, right? And they, and they got three beautiful little uh, spaniels too that uh, that are so cute. So they got everything there. <laughs> yep, it's it's hard to leave places like that. It really is. All right, so, moving on to the next one. The next one that you hit up in the New England area was Trombley Gardens in Milford, New Hampshire. And this sounds like an incredible farm. We're talking like 150 acres, family run, uh, open year round, uh, where they serve a lot of products that you can get, like meats, egg, dairy, produce, even homemade ice cream. But then it sounds like seasonally they do a lot of fu- fun things too, like especially in the fall. So what time of year did you did you and your wife visit the farm? So we were there in, uh, you know, about this time, I guess it was about this time last year. Okay. So July, October. Yeah. So we were uh, a little early for the most beautiful fall colors, but, mm-hmm. but they were well, but that was well underway. And that gave the, the, the whole farm that, you know, New Hampshire in the fall look that everybody, everybody, uh, uh, everybody talks about. And it was right. really beautiful. They had a, Oh, in, in their woods section, they had a, uh, a haunted house set up that you could go through. We were there during the day, so we didn't, we didn't stay, we didn't, or we did not partake of that at night. Um, but that'd be fun for the kids. They had, uh, uh one of those corn mazes that you mm-hmm. go through, uh, pumpkin, pumpkin patch, but you know, a bunch of animals, a bunch of stuff to sell meat and eggs and produce that they sold in the little store. Uh, and I, one of the things that amazed me there and, I guess I've just never experienced northeastern corn, but this corn, I am six foot five, and mm-hmm. I think that this corn was four feet taller than I am. Oh, my <laughs> it was gosh. incredible. Oh, I didn't know they grew the corn that big. <laughs> right. Me either. It was crazy. I put up pictures of Trombley uh, Gardens, and it's it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And and uh, Randy, you'll be happy to know that they have a lot of you pick options. Uh, Randy and I have this standing joke, kind of standing joke that I I want to do you pick, but every time we go to do a you pick, it's always out of season. So I've yet to do a you pick. <laughs> one yeah. day, Larry. Call, one day. All, all you gotta do is call <laughs> ahead. Right. That's all you gotta do is yeah. call ahead. When can I pick? Don't decide when you're there. Let's try a you pick. Just call ahead. Yeah. I, I will call ahead. Yeah. I will plan this ahead. All right. So the Rob Family Farm uh, is the next one in uh, uh, Brattleboro, Vermont. Nice. Oh, this sounds fun. This is all about maple syrup, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I had no idea how maple syrup was produced. Um, and it was so fascinating at, at this location. They've got, I think, something like um, 400 acres, something like 
5,000 trees that they, wow. that they harvest from. And it, I don't know, have you guys seen maple syrup farms? Uh, no. no, other no. than just the little stick that sticks inside of the side of the tree to get the sap. But outside yeah, of that, they put, yeah, yeah, they they put those little sticks in the trees and then they hook a little thin tube, like a, you know, like an air pressure hose that you may have seen or the uh, plumbing in your RV. But mm-hmm. it's it's very tiny, and all of those different uh, I forget what they're called the uh, the taps the taps mm-hmm. in the trees are connected to these to these. Uh, plastic lines then they pull a little bit of vacuum on those plastic lines and it pulls all the sap up into a holding area Uh Uh, but you know imagine a whole forest with with uh, this plumbing strung out to all these trees it's just it's just incredible and then when they get it there it, it there's like a 40 to to one volume reduction where they go from the sap that comes straight out to the trees to the syrup that they that they then uh, produce more. So the coolest thing about that stay was actually seeing how they did the maple service, uh, uh, syrup farming, mm-hmm. but it's, you know, it kind of illustrates one of, one of the things that we love most about harvest host is all our viewers, when they go to a place they you know, they want to try and get some of that, of that local taste, a taste of the local, yep. you know, what's right. going on locally. Right. Right. So, you know, you've, You've got these magazines that will try and tell you how to go off the beaten path and find cool things, but everybody's got those, right? So, right. so how do you how do you really connect to local people? Well, Harvest Toast is the perfect way. I mean, how else would you would how else would I have found out how a maple syrup farm works other than Wikipedia? <laughs> Except right. by going and seeing it at a Harvest Toast, right? Right, exactly. I, I'm actually on uh, Rob Farm's website here, and it looks like they were, for 105 years, they were actually a dairy farm, and it wasn't until 2011 they switched from milking cows to, to milking trees. To milking trees, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So it's been yeah. in the family, uh, the great uh, grandfather, great grandparents of the original proprietors of the farm, uh, back in uh, all the way back to 1914, wow. when the first farmhouse was built on the property. So. Uh, a lot of history there, but interesting that in 2011 they switched gears. Yeah, that is direction. interesting. And Very they become pretty good at it. Uh, that that's good. And so you walked away with a couple bottles of syrup, uh, I guess, on your way out. Absolutely, yes, we did. And uh, we took uh, we took a hike on their property, and 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 their dog came with us and our dog, so that we knew that we were safe. Their dog's oh, like about. Fun. 200 pounds our dog's about 10 pounds but they made <laughs> they made friends and we took a hike and uh talia i think was the name of that dog she kept us safe oh that's, oh, that's yeah. awesome that's awesome that's, it, yeah. you know those are the experiences i think that you're going to remember the rest of your life right yeah. uh, remember when that dog uh mm-hmm. i had a similar situation in alaska where this uh, dog we were out in the middle of nowhere this dog from this farmer had followed us on a six mile hike and came all the way back. Yeah, wow. Went and laid down by the fireplace as if he was like <laughs> protecting us from the bears the whole time. And, and, and so, but for me, I'll remember that for the rest of my life because it was such an endearing experience and just really set home. So I could imagine that's, you know, one of those for you as well. So, uh, but, yeah, it is. Yeah. Now we move it on to a couple fun ones that you've picked out here. Yes. And these okay. both sound pretty fun. And this next one is pure genius on the the folks that that own this place, making it a Harvest Host location, and that is the Mega Wash in Ashland, Virginia. I mean, what better thing to do than go get your rig completely <laughs> yeah. cleaned and then stay there overnight? This is awesome. So tell us about this. Oh, it is so awesome, and you know. It, RVers know that it's it's sometimes hard to get your rig washed, right? Yes, it um, is. And expensive. Be, yes, it can be expensive or it can take a lot of time. And lots of campgrounds won't let you wash your RV there in the campground. So this right. was right. this was really cool. They've got I mean it's just like the little car just like the smaller uh uh oh the car washes that are attended by actual humans rather than the automatic thing. So when they mm-hmm. have these tunnels that you go through and they have different people at different stations doing different things to your rig, but supersized, right? So this is a yeah. supersized thing that a 13 foot, uh, 40 foot long, uh, RV can go through the, uh, the parking there is, 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 is the parking there is nothing to, uh, nothing to, uh, that's especially, uh, noteworthy, but, uh, getting your rig washed and it worked just flawlessly. So we stayed overnight and then the next day, we got the rig washed before we left, and uh, that's probably the last time it's been washed, if I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's a year ago. 
But yeah, I'm I'm on their website, and it it I mean it's it's a big place. I mean the mega wash is definitely a mega wash, and I, I think it's a genius business plan to go. Hey, let's just get some RVers to stay here. It's pretty much guaranteed they're going to be pulling their rigs through here to get washed, and you know it's nice that you can break up your trip and and get a place to relax, but also continue your trip with a nice, clean, shiny RV, which is so yeah. hard to, to keep that way. <laughs> and again, you know, it just kind of, it kind of illustrates that, um, you know, we talked about the diversity of Harvest Host locations. I mean, you got, mm-hmm. you got mega wash and a, and a maple syrup farm, two pretty different things, but yes. both very cool, cool and memorable. Yeah, Absolutely. It says on their website here, Megawatch welcomes vehicles virtually any size. If our 75-foot touchless tunnel can't fit your vehicle, our 100-foot one will. Oh, <laughs> so my gosh. I just can't even fathom yeah. that. Just uh, that That's a massive, massive bay. So, yeah. uh, it's and a monster. And then you can self-wash it if, uh, if you want. So. Yeah, and they, yeah. And they even offer 30-amp uh, electrical service. That's yeah. available for up to two of their guests, and they have a dump station and potable water available upon your departure. So, again, what better way? You get your rig clean, you can dump, you can fill up, yeah. and off you go. Yeah, and oftentimes cool. you're looking for those uh, dump stations that are in between Harvest Host stops. Oh, um, yes. And so that that's a perfect one, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet. Oh, that is so cool. So cool. Hey, babe, remember that time we were in Key West and the sun was just beating down through the front of our RV and heating up the whole coach? Well, today, one of the sponsors of the podcast is one of our favorite products. Oh, my gosh. Yes, the MagnaShade. We love our MagnaShade so much that we are on MagnaShade number three that we have purchased for many of our RVs over the years. What the MagnaShade does is it attaches with magnets to the outside of your RV windshield and windows to reduce heat that comes into your RV by blocking up to 99% of UV rays. But one of the cool things also is that it gives you not only privacy, but you can see out from the inside of the coach. You can see out, but nobody can see in. Exactly. And I love that there were no snaps involved, no hardware involved, no suction cups involved. It's a super easy installation. And in fact, I put the Magna Shade up by myself quite often. Yeah. And we don't need a ladder or anything to put it up. We don't. It's so easy. And Magna Shade offers other products as well. Now, all of these products are patented and also custom tailored to fit your RV. They have the Magna Screen awning drop for your awning. They have these beautiful luxury floor mats and runners for the inside of your RV, as well as the easy fold RV tire shades for the outside. Now, Magna Shades offering our listeners a discount today, aren't they? They are 5% off. If you use the code RV5 when you call in and you have to call in to get this special deal, call 336 753 zero nine zero five use the code rv5 to receive five percent off be sure to get out there to magnashade.com today for shopping and more information well the next one sounds super fun too and i hope that we get to do one of these one day and that's the pike drive-in movie theater in montgomery pennsylvania And there, I swear, there is nothing more nostalgic than seeing a movie at a drive-in movie theater on that massive screen. So tell us about your experience there. Oh, that one one was great. I mean, I I think that it's, I might have been a teenager the last time I went to a drive-in movie. Yeah, exactly. It had been been such a long time, and I thought they'd pretty much died out. But I'm not sure that it's not Harvest Host that's partially responsible for the uh, for the renaissance in, in drive-in movies because there's quite a number of Harvest Host locations that are that um, are at drive-in movie uh, uh, theaters, and yes. this one was this one was pretty cool. Uh, it was a little hard for us to get find a, a way to park there. Do you remember how the the fields for the drive-in movies are kind of terraced? Oh so yeah, yeah. The, so you can pull the front of your car up and you're kind of angled up where you mm-hmm. can see the screen. Well, that didn't work for us because, you know, the front of our rig was on one ter- terrace and the back of our rig was just <laughs> short of the other. 
<laughs> just short of the other terrace. And so we had a hard time getting in there. So we ended up parking sideways and then mm-hmm. sitting inside our RV and watching it out of out to one of our big windows. Oh, oh wow. fun. So that was that was that was just it was really, really fun. And we saw I think uh I think it was Deadpool and Wolverine. It was, oh, so it was a good cool. movie, too. Oh, yeah, because yeah. yeah. it, it looks like they sh- they show first-run movies, but also some classic movies. This place has been around since 1953, which I think is incredible. I mean, this is, if you've never done a drive-in movie theater, you, you just need to experience a movie at the drive-in movie theater. And they even have a souvenir shop, so you can get some memorabilia to show, hey, I did the drive-in movie theater. I think yeah, that's fabulous. Right. When you know another thing that's cool about drive-ins, and this has always been the case, if you go back to the seventies and eighties, or, or probably even before that, it's still the case. But you get two films for ten dollars. Yes, ten dollars. Yes. Ten dollars yeah. for two. You, films. you can't go to the matinee for ten dollars uh-uh. in the regular theater. So, no, uh, so no it's again, crazy. Right. Yeah, and if you're in your RV, you can even save a little money by bringing your own popcorn. But I have to say, your own popcorn is never as good as a movie theater's popcorn. <laughs> yes. So you have to get their popcorn. They put something special in it. They do. I, th- I don't know what they put in there, but I think they put crack. <laughs> <laughs> they might. You know, at Pi- and Pike Drive-In has a really nice, um, uh, they have a nice, uh, I don't want to call it a restaurant, but a little snack shop that you can go to mm-hmm. in intermissions. And uh, they have some old style uh, projectors in there too. So it's kind of like a museum and kind of like a drive-in movie theater, kind of like a little restaurant, uh, just a really, really fun place all, all around. That's oh, awesome. that's fun. I want to do that's that. Remember, I wrote, we, we got to find a yeah. close one so we can do that. Those crackly little things that you'd hang on your window inside. Oh yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. That sound like an AM radio. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. If, if, if yours worked at all and if wasps didn't fly out of it. Right, <laughs> right, 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 exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. we got to move locations. This one doesn't work. <laughs> right. Now we can just tune, tune the sound system in the RV to a, uh, to a particular frequency on the FM band. And then you get the sound and it's just, it's just great. So one, sound quality at drive-in movies has really, uh, really improved over the years. You know, and I think that's what has saved them because I can remember back in the day and and it was a bum deal if you showed up late because you were going to get the last of those little window speakers that sounded horrible, cutting out like every three words. (laughs) Bobby did it. (laughs) And and next next we got uh, the uh, Deadpool and let's see. Did work. There we go. Next we got Deadpool (laughs) and Wolverine fighting (laughs) on stage. (laughs) So. Yeah, so I I, oh I knew I had a button that would do something similar, but right. right. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. Oh, uh, we got we got to do that. No, oh, we do, we do. So from the movie theater, we're gonna head on down south, and I think we're gonna be close to this because we're heading to Louisiana sure ourselves will. soon. And this is the Vermilionville Living History Museum and Folklore Park in Lafayette, Louisiana. Woo, that's a mouthful. But this, <laughs> yeah. this sounds really fun. So is this one of those? historic type villages that shows you like how life was like back in the day exactly that's what they have and they have okay. you know folks there dressed in period uh, appropriate clothing i think from it's sort of a, a, a of a, a rebuilding of an 1800s era sort of cajun louisiana village oh, and okay. so They've got a nice restaurant there that will sell you uh, that will sell you uh, you know Cajun Creole type food. Uh, it, it's a beautiful location nestled up next to a river. I can't remember the river's name, uh, and a little bayou on the other side with lily pads and and frogs and uh, probably snakes, but didn't see any oh, snakes. Yes. <laughs> probably nice lots gift of skeeters shop. too. <laughs> yeah. Well, not the time, not not the time of year we were there. We didn't oh, get followed by the mosquitoes. But this one we've been to a couple of times. We, for a number of years there, we were traveling. We would attend the Tampa RV show, and after the Tampa show, we would end up traveling to Texas oh, for okay. additional things. So, it's it's very nicely located as a perfect stop after one day, one or two days of travel from um, from Florida. So we've been there a couple of times and. Uh, it's very easy parking. We know how to park there. We know mm-hmm. the food's good. Uh, the folks there are really nice, and uh, it's uh, and it's a neat little peek into history. So that's a fun one, and I I, th- I think for us it's a 
it shows that it's a very, very, very nice alternative. Otherwise, for that trip from Florida to Texas, we'd probably, you know, we'd be looking at at stopping at a rest stop or a right. uh, sure. uh, yep. um, you know, or a Walmart or something like that just to just to sleep overnight. Instead, we got this wonderful stop that uh, that uh, is producing good memories and good pictures and uh, good food. Absolutely. And, yeah. and something fun to do, you know, something cultural and something fun. And, you know, and I, I hope listeners are understanding and, and getting this again. If you if you don't have a Harvest Host membership or you have one and haven't used it yet, this list really shows the diversity of the different places you can go and enjoy, park your rig and stay for a night. And a lot of these places are offering multiple night stays now. So you could literally go and make this a little side trip if you wanted to, depending on, you know, what place you pick and if they have a few extra days available. Well, so. and also, like we brought out in the last Harvest Host podcast is, you know, this is something you could do a date night over the weekend, yes, too. Even, uh-huh. even if you're not going across the country, you know. Pick a city that's maybe a hundred miles away and spend, right. you know, the weekend there for a date weekend or something. So a lot of different ways you can use the Harvest Host Network, and mm-hmm. that's what that's what's so cool about it. It is, it is, and we own a diesel pusher, and getting fuel to keep our rig rolling can get expensive, and it's not always possible to fit into a regular gas station for our diesel needs. Years ago, we discovered Open Roads to help with those problems. Open Roads is a diesel discount program that allows up to fill up at thousands of gas stations and truck stops locations nationwide. We can save at the pump at places like TA, Loves, Speedway, and more. We used to have to run back and forth from the pump to inside, getting our credit card pre-authorized and guessing at how much fuel we would need. Now we simply pull in, swipe our open roads card at the pump like a credit card, fuel up and hit the road again. With savings of up to 40 and 50 cents off a gallon, it just makes sense to join. Plus, joining is free and easy. And now Open Roads just got even better by offering an easy option for road and bridge tolls. Instead of keeping track of multiple transponders for different parts of the country, all you need is one. For a low setup fee and annual fee, you'll receive one transponder that works across the nation at all tolls and bridges. Open Roads keeps you rolling with great diesel discounts and an easy toll solution. Go to myopenroads.com and start saving big at the pump today and keep your rig rolling and the open road adventures coming. And down south also, we have the NRS Western Ranch Retreat in Decatur, Texas. And I am all about Western ranches. I mean, what is more Western than feeling like a cowboy out under that <laughs> western sun. So tell us about this place and what you and your wife Robin did there. So this one was um, a very, this one was very much an alternative to a Walmart stay. Uh, mm-hmm. It was kind of, kind of the, kind of the only thing that uh, was there uh, when we needed to go through Decatur. And uh, so we didn't do a lot of research on this one, but we thought, uh, but it looked like easy parking, so we stopped there. Little did we know that the the weekend that we stayed there, they were having a kids rodeo. Oh, so fun! We, yeah, imagine that. So uh, we we not in a million years would we have traveled intentionally to go see a rodeo in Decatur. Yeah. But we stopped there for our overnight stay, and it just happened to be going on. So we went in and watched the little kids doing their barrel racing, and uh, and. Uh, Attempting to rope, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, oh, uh, yes. and they're all of the um, uh, all of the parents were there in their. I didn't know that renovated horse trailers turned into <laughs> RVs was a thing. I didn't yes. know until yep. that weekend, but that weekend I saw about we saw about fifty of them. <laughs> oh yeah, and right. they are yeah. nice. My my uncle had one that was converted. They took the horse portion out. So that they could use it a toy as a toy hauler because it's a lower entry and it's easier to get like motorcycles and things in and out of it. So yeah, my un- aunt and uncle had a converted horse trailer. So yeah, they're they're nice. They're swanky. And now the NRS Ranch, don't they have a massive retail store that folks can shop at too? They do, and it's really nice from where you park. It's maybe a I'm going to say maybe a half mile walk, 
which is nice because we're always trying to get our steps. So oh, yes. <laughs> we have we have this ha the half mile walk up to it's just a monstrous, huge Western wear and saddles and hats and and uh, belts and latigos and you know everything that you need for rodeo and then mm -hmm. stuff for uh, stuff for non rodeoers like us too. So that's where you spend. You know, you spend, you're encouraged to spend a little bit of money at each Harvest mm -hmm. Host location, and that's where you spend your money at this one. Absolutely. Get your rope so when you go uh, rodeoing next time. Or boots. Yeah, there you go. Get your that's boots. Right. You get your that's you right. know Western boots in Texas. You get yourself yeah. a hat, and then you feel like a real Westerner. Yeah, so NRF right. stands for National Roping Supply, I guess, mm. company, uh, okay. which I didn't know until I just looked it up now. So National <laughs> Roper Supply. I'm sorry. National Roper Supply is what that stands for. Ropers but. and Rainers. I, I love yeah. how you broke up the next two. So now, again, yes. again, uh, you're saying this is one of your favorites that you've been to. You've not been to a lot of locations, and this is just, of the ones you've been to, one of your favorites. But Daisy, is that now, is that it, a pet, it, I'm assuming? So Daisy is our little chihuahua. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so she loves traveling and uh, some stays she just loves other stays she can take you know she can take her leave some other stops but mm -hmm. uh muddy paws uh farm rescue this one was in uh, new jersey uh, southampton township new jersey and to tell the truth it was we stayed there in order to get our new jersey camping sticker right so yeah that that's that's why we were at this stop but this guy um, his whole farm is built from uh, animal rescues, and oh. uh, there's some some dogs there that are rescues. There are cattle, a uh, huge bull there that's a rescue. Lots of goats. Um, they have one little pony. If I if I tell you, they call it Little Sebastian. Does that mean anything to you? No. Oh wait, 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 wait. Maybe I think as soon as you tell me, I might know. Remember Parks and Rec. They had, oh, a, they had a little Shetland pony on the TV show Parks and Rec. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's anyway, so awesome. They have a cute little Shetland pony there that they call. Uh, and, and it's just, it's great work. When we were there, uh, they had, they got, the, the owners happened to have their extended family there with them. So we got to, we enjoyed the farm and the animals. And we got to see his family seeing and enjoying, enjoying the animals and, and doing work on the farm. Uh, we just kind of felt like through Harvest Toast, we were able to kind of attach ourselves in a, in a way to a little family gathering. Yeah. Um, so, so that was really neat. But uh, Daisy, uh, our little dog, uh, I don't know, we call this her favorite, mostly because there were lots of stuff there for her to bark at. <laughs> <laughs> it she was, was entertaining happy. for her. Right. Oh, absolutely. Like when my dogs, I can tell they get excited with all the smells and I'm like, Ooh, all the smells. Yeah. You're enjoying all the smells. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. And then now you and your wife, so far with the ones that you visited, this has been kind of your one of your favorites that you probably would do again. And that's the Ellerbee Vegetable Farm in Timminsville, South Carolina. Yeah. So to outward appearances, this looks like there's a lot of vegetable farms that, that Harvest Toast has. A lot of places where you can stay on a farm and get some produce. Um what really made this one, the reason this one's our favorite is because of the host. Mm -hmm. The host there, his name is Harold. And one of the things you can do before you go is you, you let them know ahead of time if you want them to make dinner for you, which we did. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, we, we expected, uh, we, you know, I don't know, it was like $15, if I, if I recall, is what we paid for the dinner. So we didn't necessarily expect a lot. Mm -hmm. But he brought out, he brought out a, a, a steak cooked perfectly. Wow. Uh, steamed vegetables from his own uh, from his own uh, farm. Uh, some uh, some uh, grilled shrimp that were sitting on top of the steak. Built a big bonfire for us, and there was one other guest staying there, so it was us and another couple staying there. And I mean, I think the thing that really topped it off was he made us this wonderful meal. The host came out and sat with us around the campfire, told us stories about. I don't know what how many generations are on this farm. I can't remember now. Uh, maybe you guys can see it in the in the write up. But there's a there's a number of uh, a number of generations, and his brothers and sisters still lived on the farm. He told oh, us wow. some story some stories I probably shouldn't repeat about his family. <laughs> <laughs> we even got to see some 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 family gossip. Uh, you know his 
parents and grandparents and his great grandparents were all buried there on the property. So, I mean, this is just one of those. Uh, we'd go back just to see Harold again, you know, if we didn't, oh, even man. if we didn't get all this other stuff. And uh, a little taste of South Carolina local that uh, we'll remember for the rest of our lives. And, and that that was a very good meal, but it'll probably go down in history as the best meal we've ever had just because of those circumstances. That's awesome. Yep. That's and, awesome. Yeah. And I, you know, the hosts uh, at a lot of these locations, you know, especially the farms and the family farms, um, you know, you, you get to meet them and interact with them. Uh, the dairy farm slash beef farm that we stayed on, um, j- they took uh, the gentleman that owned the farm, took Randy out on a big tour in a side by side of the farm. Uh, they brought us into their home to show us like the wood that they took from the land and how they used it in their home. Um, you know, it was just, you know, beautiful wood paneling and flooring and ceiling. And I mean, it, it just, it makes it such a memorable experience because it's not just some people sitting off in the distance saying, okay, you park over there. It's they they truly immerse you into their, their lives and their family and what they're passionate about. And that's what makes it such an incredible experience. Yep. Yep. For sure. You could, you could tell the pride that they take and, you know, whether it be that situation, their farm and, and, you know, everything that they did, but, uh, it's just, you know, we kind of did things wrong. We started off our first harvest hose experience was swimming with the manatees. Right. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, that. <laughs> I mean, we, it, that definitely may, might have, uh, set the expectations a little weird for us, but, uh, yeah. but w- what an amazing adventure, uh, that was, but most all of them, uh, have been kind of in line with what you're doing here, mm-hmm. here, yeah. uh, different uh with well, a sculpture park uh, different farms and stuff like that and you know honestly i think you know while, while the swimming with the manatees was amazing and it was a great experience i, I just really think these other ones are probably more memorable these right. are things where uh, you know i didn't grow up on a farm nor did Callie, mm-hmm. and just being out there on a farm with nobody else out there except the farmer and his wife and farm dog and our rv and that's right. it so yeah. getting to see the all the weird sounds and right the whipper woo whipper woo yeah we heard the a little stars in the in the middle of the night so it's just it's it's an amazing experience it really it is. really is really yeah. really is yeah well th- this is awesome this is uh we appreciate you coming on the show today and, and and talking about some of your favorite picks that you've you've done here these are all pretty magical places and yes. we we encourage our listeners and viewers out there that again if you don't have a harvest host uh, membership uh, to get out there and uh, definitely. Um, uh, you get one because there's if, for ninety nine dollars you cannot beat this. See, even if you stay, as you said, maybe three times, two three times, it's going to pay for itself. So um, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm sorry if you can and if any of you can hear the sound in the background. My dog is standing next to me. Arr, 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 arr. <laughs> she's, wanting, she's wanting attention. Yeah, and so yeah. She, if you if you hear that, that's what's going. on. She's actually on. wanting to go to Muddy Paul's Farm Rescue yeah, Center. She yeah, there you go. It. Yes, <laughs> go, go visit little. Ba- Go visit little Sebastian there, right? You want to yeah. see little Sebastian? Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you, Larry, so much for coming on the show here and discussing these. And we we appreciate uh, uh, all that you've uh, done here, putting this all together. And so, yes, and we will you. we will have these top uh, ten, and they're not top ten, but these ten different Harvest Host uh, locations in a PDF format that's going to be downloadable either in the YouTube notes and or the uh, notes section in the. Um, whatever podcast you listen yep, to. So. And will be available on our website. Yep, for sure. You want to take us out, baby? I sure will. So thank you, Larry, for joining us today. We really appreciate you and your time. My pleasure. Awesome, awesome. This was a lot of fun, and I hope it gives a lot of you out there inspiration to get out there and check out Harvest Hosts and some of these great destinations and locations. And we want to thank you for joining us today and listening to these different locations all across the United States, and there's many more out there. And uh, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the RV Destinations podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. And don't forget, we're on YouTube now, so get out to YouTube and subscribe. That's what Charlie, my dog, is saying right now, if you can hear her in the background, she's saying make sure you hit that subscribe button below so that you are notified when we put out new content. Be sure to get out to our website. We have a ton of great free FREE travel information for our RVers, and that's RVDestinationsMagazine.com. And if you use the code PODCAST20, PODCAST20 at checkout, you're going to receive 20% off any of our subscriptions. So 
Thank you all again out there for joining us in here today. I'm Callie Beheimer here with Randy Beheimer and Larry Schultz. And we just want to say thank you. Be safe. Safe travels, y'all.